sometimes it happens where the first step that we have is not the slowest. So it's fast. So it's not rate determining. And another elementary step that occurs later is. So what that means is our fast first step it's actually going to reach equilibrium, which I know we haven't really talked about. So again, don't, don't get too upset if you find this absolutely crazy. Just remember that the slowest one is rate determining. So equilibrium is where the rate of our forward reaction equals the rate of our reverse reaction. So we have reaction going forward and backwards. So when it goes forward, we have K1. When it goes backwards, we have inverse K1. Oh, isn't that fun? So here, we have a three-step proposed mechanism where, let's see, let's cancel some stuff out. Um, two nitrogen monoxides, H2, N2O2s, H2Os, N2s, NaO2, It all works out. But this one is our rate limiting one. You don't really have to verify that that, that adds up. Um, but anyway, so this is our slow one. So our rate that we would predict is the rate law associated with the slow one, which would be K times H2 times N2O2, which means if you look at our reaction, our overall rate law here cannot contain an intermediate. So what in the world do we do here? So you can't have your rate law with something that's not in the reaction because you can't measure this concentration in the lab. So that's not going to work. So it kind of violates uh, one of the rules. Okay, so let's try again. So let's use our first step at equilibrium. So here we have um, K1, so NO, and square it, and then the backwards reaction, K negative 1, N2O2. So let's rearrange and get N2O2 by itself. So N2O2 would be um, K1 NO squared over K negative one. So now you would substitute this back into your rate equation where you have N2O2. So before we had K H2 N2O2. So here we had K H2 N2O2. So now we would have, I guess this would be K2 for our second one. Yeah. So K2 and H2 and N2O2, or sorry, NO squared. And then let's keep our Ks kind of together times K1 over K negative one. Now, all of our individual Ks, these are all just numbers. So we combine them into one overall K. 
And so that then this says our rate equals our overall rate constant K concentration H2 NO second order. So that's kind of how you get, because you would look and you say, oh, well, from the balanced equation, you know, you would expect the exponents to be different. So this is kind of how you end up with reaction orders that are different than the exponents. So let's try one. Again, if this is totally crazy, then don't get too torn up about it. So this is kind of our target here. This is our overall reaction, and these are our proposed mechanisms. So let's kind of line them up real quick first. Because um, we want O3 on the left and O2 on the right. So let's say O3 gas K2, or sorry, plus O gas K2, 2O2 gas. Okay, so then see here this oxygen intermediate goes away. So we're left with 2O3 gas and 3O2 gas. Okay, so this could work because it adds up to the overall equation. So that's our first step to proposing a valid mechanism. Now we have to make sure that the results that we get are consistent with this overall rate law. So that's the next part. So they add up, so that's our first check. So, so far it's valid. Now, you haven't seen this before where you have something that has an order of negative one. We've only been talking about zero, first, and second order. But now you can have fractional orders, you can have negative orders, and this is going to kind of get into that a little bit. Again, if it's absolutely in the weeds, don't lose sleep about it. Um, watch it several times. So now this says that our slow one, so this should be our rate limiting step, right? So this is slow. So we should have our, so we predict that our rate equals K O3 O, that's not going to work because oxygen isn't in our original equation. So we have to get rid of it. So that means we go to our fast reaction here and we need to put it at equilibrium. So this would be K2. So we need to take our first reaction, we need to put it at equilibrium. So that means K1 times the concentration of O3. And that's going to equal, so rate of our forward equals our rate of reverse, equals K inverse, backwards K, times uh, O2 and oxygen. That's an equal sign. Okay, so now we're trying to get rid of this oxygen. So we need to get this oxygen by itself. Okay, so this is what we're solving for. So now let's divide. So let's put our K's together. So that means K1 over K negative 1. O3 over O2 equals O. All right, this is just algebra. We're just plugging and chugging and substituting. We're substituting weird things that you probably haven't done before, but that's okay. So now let's substitute for oxygen this, okay? So equals, so rate equals, so let's keep our K's together. So here we have K2 and then we have K1 and we have K negative one. Then we have 
03 because we haven't plugged and chugged not so much yet now for oxygen we have O3 over O2. So now let's clean this up. All the rate constants get combined into an overall K. So they're not K for each step, they're overall rate constant K. O3 times O3 squared. And then in the bottom, we're going to use a negative exponent to do that. So that's where we get O2 to the negative one. So yeah, this is not nearly as hard as you probably think it is. It's just weird. So if you get something where the slow step has an intermediate that's not in your final reaction, take something that occurs before it, set it at equilibrium, isolate, the intermediate and plug it back in. And so look, it matches. So this is a valid mechanism because these two add up to the overall and the results are consistent with what they determined in the lab.